We got a little bit more APA nine ball. This time it's a five versus a four. Let's check it out. All right, guys, today we got Luis and Daniel. Luis is a five, Daniel is a four. It's a 38-31 race. And I can tell you from when I added the score in, we're gonna be editing this one a lot. Luis wins the lag on to rack one. All right, Luis to break, rack one, here we go. Looks like a dry break, nothing went down. Daniel's got a look at this one ball. Eight ball runs into the six, pushes it in the way of his two ball. Otherwise it would have been a good shot. This is a pretty easy safety here. You just bump into the two, put the cue ball right here next to the six and the eight, and run the two up here. He decides to go the other way with it and try to put the two ball back there. Sells it out. This is APA nine ball for those of you who are unaware. APA nine ball is a points game. Each ball is worth one point. The nine ball is worth two points. If you foul on a ball at any time, that ball is taken out of play. It's considered a dead ball. Nobody gets the points for it. Goes for the combo. It's a different strategy to this game than standard nine ball. You don't want to go for early nines because it means you're getting less points. So you tend to see people go for a lot more of a run out style. Luis has a really weird delivery with his stroke. That's a really good safety though. Wanted it to uh, end up right here under the nine ball. If that's a head right here where he takes the kick away, but it's a pretty good safety. Luis is one of those guys who is very inconsistent, but when he's on, he can be very scary. Makes good contact. Might get a good roll. Looks like it's going to sneak out a little bit. Oh, Daniel's going to kick at this one. One rail. All right. Looks like he has left Daniel a shot. Oh, catches the outside point of the side. Leaves Luis hooked again. Looks like he's going for a one rail. Leaves him no shot. Oh, goes for the kick. Ends up scratching. He's going to give Luis ball in hand. Now the balls are a little fuzzy on this one because this is the same setup as my last video. I Somebody reached into this area at the exact moment I was trying to lock the focus in and it locked in on the front rail. Usually I try to focus on the dot in the middle of the table. All right, Luis runs out gently for his three. Not sure how many rails he wants to play this one, but 
It looks like he tries to hold it off of one rail. Gets a decent roll. That's a pretty small window, though. I might have preferred seeing him actually go for something like a uh, two rail to get it back down here. A little bit bigger of a landing space or even coming out this way, you know, just pushing it through. But he left himself a shot. He stands up and throws his shoulder into all of his shots and sometimes it just he misses terribly and sometimes he just runs a rack it's really really weird Dana makes a good four ball shot looks like that eight's gonna drop yep Good shot on that five ball. Leaves himself a cuttable six ball. Cue ball is going to run though. If he makes this, the cue ball is going to take a trip around the table. So you kind of want to prepare for those sorts of things. I like to put a little bit of right on this and just play it around the table and come back up for the seven this way. If you play it straight up and down, you run a risk of hitting the nine ball. You came pretty close to it, but just spin those a little bit, prepare to go on a trip. Tries to bank the seven. All right, let's see if Luis has a shot short on the side pocket. Wasn't gonna have a shot on the nine ball after that anyway, so not the worst miss. Wing for a bank. Is he going to get lucky? No. All right. Let's see what Luis is going to do with this one. See, I'm not sure if he was trying to cut that or if he was trying to leave it where he left it. It's, it's so hard to tell because of his delivery. Usually you can tell when somebody's trying to slow roll a shot or push a shot out or something. You just can't tell with this guy. All right, let's see if he can thin this seven in. Come back up the table for the nine. Daniel has left Luis a look on this seven. those of you who are uh, familiar with the channel. You'll notice his shot style is reminiscent of uh, Donnie's, except at a much slower pace. However, Luis is clearly moving before he hits the ball. So that plays a lot to his inconsistencies. No, oh, that's going to go in. All right. Well, it looks like we're going to finally wrap, wrap up rack number one. All right. Eight, two Daniel's up on to rack two. All right. Daniel to break rack two. Coming up dry. 
All right, Luis has got a hooked one ball. Now there is no push out in APA nine ball. So you have to try to make contact. He almost made that. You have to try to make contact with your uh, lowest number ball after the break. You have no choice. They've taken away a big part of the game. That's one of the things I don't like. I mean, I get it. APA is all about speeding up the game, but we've talked about this before, especially in eight ball is there's a lot of rules that just punish the wrong shooter. All right, let's see what Daniel's going to be doing with this one ball. Oh, just catches the four on the way by. Not going to leave Luis much. There's only nine balls on the table and he seems to always be hooked. And then when he has an open shot, he chucks it about six inches off the pocket. Well, Luis gets a fortunate leave there. Seven balls in the way of the cue ball. And if you've made it this far into the video, today's question of the day, no, that's not going to be a new thing, but today's question of the day is how bad is it to drink expired coffee creamer? Didn't even realize they had a date on them. Today I held it in such a way as I was pouring myself my iced coffee. And uh, yeah, August 8th, it is now more than halfway through October. Am I going to have to stop recording at some point? <laughs> I haven't had it for a while. A little nervous. Daniel comes up a little bit short on that one, makes contact with the ball, but doesn't quite get to the rail. Pretty close. Let's see what Luis is going to do with this. Should be drawing this back with a little bit of bottom right. He does. Plays that one great. You see what I'm saying? When he makes contact with the shot, he actually puts up a really nice one. He's got good touch, good speed around the table. His fundamentals are just hard to watch. Now that one, right as I say something, do what he does with his three. Should just push right up. That's gonna miss. Wow. Well, Luis has got a familiar sight. Can't see the ball. Jumps up on his kick shot. Just misses it. All right, plays that one well. It's a great angle on this four ball to shoot at the five. He's just going to try to run this one towards the rail. It's going to naturally roll out. You just don't want to overhit it. You overhit it. It's fast table. Let the ball do what it wants to do and yeah. Okay, he's got a pretty good... If he makes this, he should... Yep, there you go. He did make that. I don't have a different angle than you guys do, but... Five went in. I could have used some outside spin on that to uh, take it off. He went straight into this rail and straight back out. A little bit outside spin. He can bring this down here so he doesn't have to use this bridge situation again. He struggled with the bridge on the last shot, so. Struggles with the bridge again. Luis over hits one. Good looking guy just walked past the camera. All right, let's see what Luis can do with the bridge. He's holding it weird. Ends up in a very favorable position. It's gonna be hard for Daniel to do anything with that. Definitely doesn't shoot well with the bridge. He's shoving the cue from his torso.
So he seems to be checking out his backhand while he's stroking. I think he feels uncomfortable right now with this stroke or with this game in general. It's not a good thing. I speak from experience. Manages to avoid the scratch, hides the ball behind the seven. Poor Louise. Or behind the eight, I mean. Makes a good kick. Double kisses, leaves a seven out in front of the pocket. I will say, if Luis is checking out his stroke, yes, he's uncomfortable with it, but it's not the end of the world because it means he's aware that something is wrong. So it means, ooh. So it means he can fix it. This one's pretty straight in. You just want to draw this one back a little bit. You don't need to kill it. Not a bad shot. That was a good shot. All right, nine ball down. 11-9 now. Luis making a little bit of a comeback. On to rack three. All right, Luis breaking. Is he going to make a ball? Traffic, eight ball goes in. Eight ball goes in, can see the one. Two and three are tied up. Don't know if the two passes this way. He's taking a look at it now. It might. Let's see where he tries to set up. Plays to a decent spot. Not the best. Yeah, hits the three. It doesn't pass the three. Puts it up against the long rail, though. We might see a stab at the nine ball here. Like I said, it's not advantageous to go for the nine early in APA nine ball, but if your hands are tied, move on to the next rack. Looks like he does go for it, but misses it by a bit. Battles the two ball in, leaves himself a good shot on the three. Four ball is pretty much in a great spot to get on the five. You just want to draw this one back a little bit. He stops it there instead. He had room to draw it back over this way a little bit, which would have been a little beneficial. But he should be okay. You just don't want to overhit this one. You also don't want to miss it. Puts a little bit of draw on this one, punches it into the rail, sends it back up the table. Sends this one around the table, and Luis can see a ball. See, now he's checking his uh, tangent line to see where the cue ball is going to hit, so he thinks the cue ball is probably going to bounce around here. So he knows that he's going to take a path looking like this. Is he going to try to hold it for the six? Maybe. If you know you can't hold it, we just talked about this. Send it on a ride, man. Take that rail. Bring it back out up the table. Give yourself a shot. Something better than this. Leave it in on the long rail across the table is not great. It's going to hit that six ball twice. Why is it whenever I play a four or a five in APA, they shoot 10 times better than this? Boink. Yeah. 
every time. I had one loss last session and it was 205. Not the last session, the last session I played. One loss, went 10 and one, lost to a five. And I don't even think it was close. Overcuts this one a little bit. He's trying to hold the ball again. That's You don't want to hold it. Just play that, play that cue ball back out to here. Decelerates on his stroke, but I th to be fair, I think he decelerates on most of his strokes, the way he stands up and he just slowly lifts himself up. I think he looks at the cue ball last, which I know a lot of people do, but I'm not a big fan of it. All right. Daniel drops the nine ball. We are tied 15 apiece, heading on to rack four. Daniel to break. All right, Daniel breaking. Thumbs up, try again. see what Daniel's going to do with this one ball. See if it squeezes past the six or if he's going to try to make the six. Looks like it would squeeze past the six. Hit it a little hard. It's going to leave Luis with a what looks to be a rail first. Good shot. Hard not to over hit those. It's, those are hard to gauge because you're hitting the ball so thin. That inertia from the cue ball just stays loaded up in the cue ball and it keeps rolling. Well, that was a good miscue right there. Well played. That's the thing about looking at the cue ball last and why I disagree with it. There are some really, really good players who look at the cue ball last. David Alcady, for instance, from Spain. Remarkable player. He looks at the cue ball last. However, if you watch David Alcady's stroke, his fundamentals are on point. He does not move. And when he does move, he misses the shots. It's like most of the shots that you see Alcady miss when he's playing in these big events, he moves his head around. If you move, looking at the cue ball doesn't help anything. Your hand-eye coordination is set where you're stroking in one direction. If you move your frame while you're shooting, oh, just missed that one. If you move your frame while you're shooting and you look at the cue ball last, your muscles aren't sending the cue ball where you think it's going to go. If you don't move at all, heck yeah, look at the cue ball last. If it works for you. But he moves. He moves. And he misses easy shots. Those three rails, kicks it, almost makes it in the corner. Gotta watch that corner pocket on that shot. Yep. Every time you got a ball here frozen to the rail near this diamond. If you're out here anywhere, the natural path for that ball is that way. Put a little bit of draw on them, put a little bit of right spin. If you're a little bit further up the table like this, go ahead and put a little bit of uh, follow or a little bit of left spin on it and play the short rail. Bring her this way. But yeah, that's such a common scratch and lower level players never seem to see it or fix it. Keep an eye out for it because it's it, it gets you a lot. Took me a long time to break my wife of the habit of scratching in that pocket on those shots. Great touch on that shot. Just got to get around the nine. He can play it into the rail if he wants.
Opens this one wide. <clears throat> Played good speed to get on that nine ball, but just sent it out there. Daniel plays this one great. A little bit of left spin, a little bit of draw. Then he chunks the nine ball. Unfortunate. Overcuts the nine ball again. Oof. I think that's twice we've seen him catch that point on a uh, bank. Well, it looks like Luis put a good miss on this one. Daniel might be going for the bank here. Yeah. It doesn't look like he's making much correction on his uh, banks. He keeps hitting them all short. Looks like Luis is going for a bit of a separation safety. Wanted to get that one closer to the short rail. And the exchange continues. Let's see if we can cut this one in. Gets it to fall. Nice. All right. Well, we got 2118. Luis. He's got to pick it up a little bit, though. He is giving up seven balls. All right, Luis to break. Seven ball drops. One ball is going close. Oh. Can't catch a break, man. Let's see what he tries to do with this one. He might be trying to spin. Looks like he's trying to hit around here and spin it in. Up oh, now he's changed. Looks like he's going long rail around to it. Looks like he was <laughs> poking hope, just try to make some contact and go for the best. Left annual, pretty easy shot. And it looks like the two ball goes this way, so Daniel just needs to uh, bring the cue ball around to here. Not too hard, you don't want to jam this one. Put a lot of left spin on that one. <laughs> kind of took it away from himself. He can still make it though. Run into the nine ball, good shot. See if you can squeeze this three past the six. Looks like it goes. You don't want to hit it too hard because you might have to hit that long rail. Pocket speed helps these shots go in. Lays it off to six, which is nice. Gets around the eight ball for the four. Oh, misses his four ball. Misses his four ball, and Luis basically has the same shot he just made on his nine. So, see if we can get a repeat performance. No, no repeat performance. All right, Daniel's gonna go to the top right, it looks. Oh, he's changing his mind. I like putting in the top right with, uh, put some top left on this one. Oh, he's gonna play it in the nine ball. Oh, 
don't think this four ball passes the nine, so I expect Luis to probably just duck on this one. Kinda. Although it's pretty, I wouldn't say it's an easy kick, but it's a pretty makeable kick right here. He's not going for the kick. Not only is he not going for the kick, he's got the bridge out. I don't know if he thought he could sneak that behind the nine ball and hide it. Well, Luis jams that one. Leave himself an awkward five ball shot. That's a good safety. Oof. He ball takes a weird bounce. Not sure if he caught this point over here or if he put a bunch of right on that. Nice easy roll here. Oh, he spins it and he overfires it. That's not really sure why he's hitting those so hard. He was hitting a bunch of them nice and easy early. Good news is this shot rolls out perfectly for the eight ball. Bad news is it's all the way up the table. Good shot. We are playing on eight foot valley tables. I know eight foot is a weird measurement for a lot of you guys out there who either play on sevens or nines only. It's the standard in this town. Annoyingly. We do have a, my nine ball team actually plays out of a place that has a bunch of nine footers, but I never get to show anything from there because the lighting is atrocious, which is a shame because I'd like to promote the place. It's nice. It's in downtown Reno, but I'm not going to tell you the name until they put lights up. All right. Luis is up. 28 to 1. He's got 10 balls to go. Daniel also has 10 balls to go. Let's go to the next rack. All right, Luis to break. Rack 6. Try break again. Looks like he was going for a uh, carom into the three. Came up a little short. Luis. Wow. To get safety. He's got moments of brilliance in him, man. And a whole lot of moments of WTF. He might get around on this ball. Go, go, go. He tries to will it along. Looks like it's going to bump the five, though. Yeah, probably did. Well, looks like Luis has a stop shot here on this one. That gets him to the two. Three balls hung over a pocket. He might be playing this off the long rail to get a little closer to the two. He's flirting with that eight ball. Overhit that one just a bit. I know he's trying to get a good angle to send it up the table towards the three, but the three is hanging over the pocket. It's not necessary to try to force things when you've got this much traffic up here. A little bit of high right, maybe. Yep. Yep. 
I don't like getting straight in on this shot. I actually like having the cue ball down here because I like to play this one with a little bit of spin to bring it back around, get past that side pocket. Make it easier to control to get on your five ball. If you end up straight in on that four ball, you want to be a little bit closer to it than this. But it looks like he has enough angle where he can play this into the rail and come out past the eight. No. Plays it on the short. Now this one's going to be tough. The uh, five ball looks like it's almost at the uh, diamond diamond. If you're cutting those, the cue ball runs this way. So got to be mindful of what you're putting on it. He's putting some top on it. He might be okay. Yep. Put some top on it. Played it short. Wouldn't have minded running into that six ball, but got around it okay. A little bit of high left here. You want to bring this, try to avoid hitting that eight ball and just park it right over here. So let's see. About 1130 English should be fine. 11. Not bad. You're hitting the seven ball pretty thin, so you do want to get up and down the table. You want to avoid the bottom left pocket if you can. So I tend to either lean into this one and try to bring the cue ball this way or push it past that eight and try to bring it back up the middle of the table. Yeah, he holds it, leaves himself a long angle, not bad. Oh, overcuts it. Overcuts it. Leaves Daniel hooked. My stomach is starting to turn. I don't know if it's because I'm nervous about the ancient coffee creamer or if I'm about to die. All right. Almost makes this eight ball. It was a good attempt. He hits that a little lighter. He also leaves a good safety. Leave the eight ball back here. Leave your cue ball out here. Gonna be a tough one to look at. Luis does not want to hit this one with top. If he's gonna try to cut this thin, you don't want to hit this one with top at all because it's uh, about an inch away from the rail. You're looking at this. Yep. Yeah, you definitely don't want to hit that one with top. If you do, put a little bit of left spin on it, just a hair, so you can catch this rail here. But Daniel makes it. Luis needs three. Daniel needs eight. All right, Daniel to break. Just misses the eight ball. One ball's out in the open. Good roll up almost naturally for the two ball if it passes the six. So what we're looking at is, let's see which way he goes with this. If he tries to go this way, this cue ball is going to come out for the two. Yeah, he's going to go that way. So the two should pass the six. If it passes the six, I expect him to go that way. If he makes this shot. No, he tries drawing it and scratches. Kills the eight ball. If he follows that, it does hit right around here. He probably didn't want to mess with the corner pocket. That's why he juiced it with some draw, but don't need to kill it. Good shot. Oh boy. Well, he leaves Luis a six ball hanging over the pocket. So you just want to slow roll this com this combo here. Leave the two where the six is. Don't let the two ball 
go into this rail and then hide behind the nine. And don't hit it too thin where it bounces and hides behind the nine. You gotta be really, really precise and nice and easy. Almost gets it hidden behind the nine. I think he's safe though. Well, if you can see it, looks like he can. If you can, this just rolls out for the three naturally. Get around the five. And there you have it. He needs a three ball to win this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, nine ball stuff for me because I got to mark the scores. It takes a while for me to get it all recorded and edited. Uh, got a weird eight ball match with really bad lighting at a place that was awful. I've uh, got two of them recorded. I don't really think I can use either one of them. So I get to see what happens in the nine ball this week and what I'm going to be able to get recorded. They're checking to see if he actually won. He did. I double checked the score. All right, guys. Uh, if you like the video, please punch like. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so. Uh, at the time of recording, I think we're at 515 subs. That is awesome. Thank you guys very much. I appreciate it all. I will see you guys in the next one. I have no idea what it's going to be. It might be some bad lighting or it might be something entirely different and I scrap those. I don't want to scrap them. I got a couple uh, Filipino guys that uh, square off. One of them, you know, Donnie and another one named Carlo. And uh, it's kind of a fun match to watch, but it looks awful. We'll see. I might try to make it work, but until then, we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.